I like myself puzzle games of all types. This of course includes falling puzzle block games like Tetris, Puyo Puyo, Panel de Pon, Columns, Puzzle Bubble, Puzzle Fighter. There are so many out there. But what if there was just one game that had them all? Cross Dreams is what Puyo Puyo Tetris would be like if it was taken to its complete extreme. We aren't talking about a crossover between just two types of falling block puzzle games. We're talking about a crossover between every falling block puzzle game out there. Okay, that's an exaggeration, but Cross Dreams is a wild game. Described by its own Twitter as a hybrid action puzzle battle game, Cross Dreams pulls its gameplay mechanics from a wide variety of different titles, all wrapped in its own weird visual identity. The gameplay basics are simple. You pick a character, each one of whom is associated with a different puzzle game, and then you pick a partner that you can swap to mid-battle like it's some kind of fighting game. Then the goal is to beat the CPU or other players through the game's local or online multiplayer. Clear blocks from your side of the screen and make them fall onto your opponents. It's like every competitive puzzle game, just with a ton more puzzle types. So just to run them all down, you have The Fighter inspired by Capcom's Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. In this style, you flip multicolored blocks in order to create larger blocks that you can then destroy. The bigger the block, the more damage to your opponent. The Robots, inspired by Sega's Puyo Puyo series, probably the most well known. Attach blocks of the same color to each other and once you hit four or more, they all disappear. The remaining blocks all drop and ideally create another four chain to start a combo. The larger the combo, the more damage you do. The Goddess inspired by Sega's columns. Connect 3, the video game. Blocks in sets of three fall down in a vertical line and you can change their positioning before they touch down. Create a row, column, or diagonal of three to have those blocks be destroyed and the rest fall down. The more change you make, the more damage you do. The Hive, inspired by Nintendo's Puzzle League, or Panel de Pon for us weebs. Move blocks along a horizontal plane to make four or more match, and that deletes all the blocks. They can be aligned horizontally or vertically, and the more you align in one move, the stronger your attack. The Dinosaur, inspired by Taito's Puzzle Bobble series. Another classic, you have to shoot the colored bubbles from the bottom of the screen to pop the matching color on the top of the screen if you can make three or more connect. Any bubble not somehow connected to the top of the screen will fall and be eliminated along with any pop bubbles, and the more you eliminate, the more damage you do to opponents. The Comet, inspired by Nintendo's Kirby Star Stacker. Sandwich the star blocks between matching planet blocks, either horizontally or vertically. The more you eliminate in one move, the more damage you do. The Thinker, inspired by Data East's Magical Drop. In this one, you grab pieces of fruit and then launch them back up to hit matching fruit pieces. You can grab as many fruit pieces of the same type as you want, and then launch them all back at once. And if you chain three or more, they all get eliminated. The Skeleton, inspired by Taito's Pochi and Nya. A mix of Puyo Puyo and Puzzle Fighter, here you connect the coloured pieces, much like you would in Puyo Puyo. However, when you want to destroy them all, you press a button to turn the next piece into a trigger. That will then destroy the entire chain. It sounds simple, but this was the one game I had no clue what I was doing when I first played it. The Journey, the first original puzzle game of the bunch, designed as an easy mode. In this game, you remove blocks from the ball, trying to consecutively collect blocks of the same color. When you run out, you move on to the next color, and as long as you keep it consecutive, the blocks will eventually vanish and be dropped onto the opponent's field. The Astronaut, the other original game and one designed for more hardcore puzzle fans. Clear rows of targets by sandwiching them between matching horizontal, vertical or diagonal blocks. You can also use special items like a bomb or rocket to remove all pieces in an area or column from the game. It sounds simple when I say it like that, but it's quite confusing in practice. And finally, we have the game's secret character, the bear. This one is just Tetris. It's hidden away on the CSS and can show up sometimes if you choose the random option. Tetris doesn't need explaining, but it is the only character without a story mode. Each of these different modes plays mechanically identical to the games they are inspired from, so if you have any experience with the arcade versions of these games, you'll understand how they work. Which is good, because the game doesn't explain any of this, unless you go to the how-to section of course. But my first instinct was to play multiplayer, and then the story mode, and these both just throw you into the action. Story mode especially, as its weird and psychedelic text-free storytelling method is both charming and confusing. 
I have a vague idea of what is happening in each plot, but not the full grasp of it, and the trippy backgrounds and flashing lights don't help me get a better understanding. Being esoteric seems to be the aim of the game here, as I spent a lot of time very confused early on. When you clear a mission in story mode, a dog appears, and you're given these three options, and I had no clue what any of them meant at first. I think it means to look at the dog, speak to the dog, or pet the dog? But I don't know what difference these options make. Maybe there just isn't a difference. The controller options as well range from arcade, fancy, and mash, and that alone does not explain what any of this means. The game is designed to be played with a fight stick it seems, so arcade maps things to that, but fancy just seems to be a, well, fancy way of saying custom, while mash is just the normal controls. I think. The controls also seem to do more than just change the controls for some games though, at least maybe with fancy on. One complaint I was originally going to make here was with the puzzle bobble mode. Rather than having the next coloured ball be decided by the game, you can choose from a random selection, however choosing the ball is cumbersome and slow, requiring the players to push up or down in a direction and press a button to select it. But pushing left or right also causes the shooter to move, which can misalign it and makes the whole thing really annoying to deal with. Yet when I played it again during story mode using mash controls, it was just standard puzzle bobble system. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know why, why it was different for that, but okay. Editing Josh here. Uh, it turns out I do know why now. If you play sandbox mode right at the start, it asks you how much pressure you want to apply, and if you want to choose which piece is going to be upcoming rather than letting it be random like it is in every other mode. Uh, the problem is, this is the default option. Uh, so when I was just jumping into the game, you know, always play with default on first, that, uh, that's how I ended up with this. Lord knows why it's the default option, but there we go. Now if we figured it out. I also think that the flashing colours found in menus is not great. It's very over the top, and while I am not epileptic, I feel like this is the sort of menu that might trigger something in someone, so just to be safe I'm not going to show it on screen. The visual style for this game does have charm with its hand-drawn characters and story panels, even though it looks very all over the place at first glance. And I think that's the biggest criticism I have of Cross Dreams. The way it brings all these puzzle games together is great and the gameplay is mostly fantastic, but its presentation and UI feel almost intentionally obtuse, and for the first few play sessions I was just left really confused, which isn't the greatest first impression. But once I got used to it and began to figure things out, I discovered there was a fun competitive game to be had here. Anyone who is a fan of puzzle games should check it out, and potentially, if they add more characters to the mix in later updates, we could get even more gameplay styles to play with. I also like how positively affirming this game is, like when you do well in a puzzle and you get a big combo, it's like, you are the smartest person in the world, and I'm like, oh well, thank you, thank you for that very much. Currently, the game is only on Steam, but it is a recent release, so we'll see if it comes to consoles in the future or not. This video was actually requested to us by our ultimate patron, Mr. JBRPG. His name is on screen right now, along with all of our $5 plus patrons. To find out how you can join them to get early access to content, and to connect to us in our Patreon Discord channels, follow the link below. Let us know what you think of Cross Streams based on our review. Are you interested in the game? We'd love to hear from you. And while you're at it, remember to subscribe so that you always remember to return to the source.